A few weeks ago, the 3D printing professor posed the following problem. Light up LEDs with a small delay between each using a resistor capacitor arrangement of components. Here's what I came up with. The LEDs are connected up in parallel, each one in series with a current limiting resistor. Capacitors of increasing capacitance are connected in parallel across each LED. Job done! It turns out, however, that this circuit was meant for a cosplay lightsaber prop, and as the 3D printing professor correctly points out, the LEDs will power off in the long direction. I've modified the circuit to make this issue clear. The diodes prevent the charge flowing between the capacitors, and additional resistors slow down the switch off sequence. This effect is more suited to a clumsy blaster. So uncivilized. What we need is an elegant solution for a more civilized age. We can use blinky tape. This is a strip of addressable LEDs controlled by a tiny microcontroller. This one uses an 80 Mega 32U4. Ah, looks like the 3D printing professor would disapprove on my use of microprocessors and prefers the part of look mum no computer. I believe this to be the TV trope known as a master makes their own tools. In a world where resources are not especially scarce and where manufactured technology is the norm, a practitioner of some skill is still expected to go out and scavenge the materials and parts to hand make their own tools of the trade. This is simply the expected way to do it. It seems the Jedi are asked to acquire all of the parts for and assemble their own lightsaber by hand from scavenged parts they find over their travels. I suppose this forges a personal connection with their creation. Well, if during your travels you manage to scavenge an LM 3914, 3915, or 3916, a chip commonly found in LED VU meters, it is fairly straightforward to wire it up so as to illuminate a bar of LEDs according to the voltage of a capacitor as it slowly charges and discharges. Internally, this is essentially an array of comparators, each of which has the reference input connected to a voltage divider. Lacking this integrator circuit, you could build an equivalent circuit using discrete comparators with an external voltage divider made from a chain of resistors in series. This LM339 provides four comparators. Operational amplifiers can also be used for this purpose. The TL431 is a precision voltage shunt that acts as if it has a comparator inside of it. However, using it in place of a comparator results in some strange behavior. All the LEDs start to glow dimly before the switch on sequence starts and there is an afterglow when the LEDs are being powered down. This effect is more noticeable in a darkened environment. Needless to say, this is not a recommended way to use the TL431. N-channel MOSFETs have a threshold gate voltage above which they start to pass current. We can make use of this property in our circuit, shown here. The double throw switch alternately charges and discharges a resistor capacitor combo. A series chain of resistors forms a voltage divider that produces a voltage drop on the gate of each MOSFET in the sequence. Thus, each MOSFET switches on the LEDs at a slightly different time and then switches them back off in reverse order. In my breadboard version of this circuit, I've omitted the discharging switch 
and simply let the capacitor discharge to the voltage divider. But can we do this using bipolar junction transistors? Unfortunately, we cannot naively swap the MOSFETs with NPN transistors. Unlike the MOSFET gate, the base of a transistor has to conduct current in order to switch on, and this small current is always flowing through the voltage divider. To solve this problem, we can replace the voltage divider with a series chain of diodes. This works because each diode has a forward voltage of about 0.6 volts, so the capacitor voltage has to exceed this before current can conduct through the resistors at the base input to each NPN transistor. This happens at different times for each, each transistor, thus switching on each LED in sequence along the diode chain. When the capacitor discharges, the LEDs switch off in reverse sequence. Note the base resistances have to be reduced to compensate for the voltage drops the further we extend this chain. And here is that circuit demonstrated to be fully operational. One downside of using diodes in series is that you cannot extend this chain indefinitely as you could with a voltage divider. With a 5 volt supply rail, there is only room to fit the forward voltages of about 7 diodes. So this all leaves us with one question. Which of these circuits do you consider to be the most elegant for making a lightsaber prop in a civilized age? Hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs>